JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for April the 27th. I am Haralamos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against all but one of the other uh, G10 currencies on Tuesday during the Asian session Wednesday. It gained the most versus NOC, GBP and SEC in that order, while it lost uh, ground only versus the Japanese yen. Now, the strengthening of the US dollar in the safe haven yen suggests that markets may have traded in a risk-off fashion yesterday and today in Asia. Indeed, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that all but one of the other major European uh, of the excuse me, all but one of the major major European indices under our radar closed in negative territory. The only one which managed to stay fractionally positive was uh, UK's FTSE 100. Risk aversion intensified during the US session and all three of Wall Street's uh, main indices tumbled more than 2% with Nasdaq posting um, its uh, steepest one-day fall since September 2020. In Asia today, China Shanghai Composite gained, Hong Kong's Hang Seng traded virtually unchanged, but Japan's Nikkei and South Korea's KOSPI lost more, lost more than 1% each. Now, with not much with not uh, much to say, we believe that the drivers behind the reduction in risk appetite remain the same as uh, the last um, as the last uh, few weeks, and those are the uncertainties surrounding the war in Ukraine and its effects on the global economy, the slowdown in China due to the very restrictive policies for dealing with the new outbreak of the COVID-19 virus and increasing expectations over aggressive monetary policy tightening by some uh, major uh, central banks, especially uh, the Fed. Now, speaking about monetary policy, yesterday ECB policymaker uh, Martin Kazaks said that uh, his bank could raise interest rates soon and that it has room for up to three hikes uh, this year, joining the group of officials calling for an earlier, for an earlier exit uh, from stimulus. The ECB has so far signaled that uh, a rate hike could be delivered sometime after its APP asset purchase program scheme, which is uh, telegraphed to be over in, uh, in the third quarter. However, such rhetoric is too vague and calls for uh, an end in APP early in July so the bank can lift rates within the same month May have encouraged market may have encouraged market participants to bring forth their uh, rate hike bets, and that's why we saw European indices drifting lower. But why didn't the euro gain? Actually, it did against uh, most of the other G10 currencies. It underperformed only uh, against the safe havens yen and franc, as well as uh, the US dollar. The reason why euro dollar kept drifting south is uh, that even with uh, the ECB beginning its hiking cycle in July, the Fed is still expected to proceed much more aggressively. Therefore, there is still ample divergence, ample divergence in monetary policy between those two central banks. According to the CME Fed Watch tool, the Fed is widely anticipated to hike by 50 basis points when it meets uh, next week, while there is a 72 two percent probability for a 75 basis points hike in june there is even a 68 percent chance for a, for 50 more basis points to be added in july now staying in the fx world the aussie was found lower against its u.s counterpart 
This morning, but it was uh, much lower before the Australian CPIs were out. The headline rate rose to 5.1% in the first quarter from 3.5% in the last quarter of 2021, exceeding expectations of a rise to 4.6%. The trimmed mean rate also rose uh, by more than anticipated and while the weighted uh, mean rate missed its own forecast uh, by a fraction, it was still half a percentage point higher than it was in the fourth quarter. Now, these numbers may have, may have encouraged some participants to add to their bets with regards to future rate hikes by the, RB by the RBA, and that's uh, why we saw the Aussie rebounding. According to the ASX 30-day interbank cash rate futures yield curve, market participants expect interest rates to exceed 2.25% by the end of the year. Remember that the current level of the benchmark uh, cash rate in Australia is at 0.10%. So, having said all that though, the RB has yet to confirm whether those expectations are realistic and that's why we expect any CPI related uh, upside extensions to be short-lived. We believe that against currencies like the US dollar, the British pound and the Canadian dollar, we will just see a corrective bounce before the next leg south. Our reasoning is that the Fed, the Bank of England and the Bank of Canada have already signaled uh, that they will continue with aggressive tightening in uh, the next months. Now tonight, market participants may turn, uh, may turn their attention to the Bank of, Jap to the Bank of Japan decision. Uh, usually meetings of this bank pass unnoticed and uh, as uh, the bank provides little action or or little important information to excite the markets. However, things may be different this time around, with the benchmark uh, Japanese government bond uh, yield keep rising to the upper limit of the central bank's range. Many are eager to hear what policymakers have to say. The bank has in recent weeks defended its policy under which it pledged to keep 10-year yields around 0% uh, within a 0.25% at a time when uh, the Fed is pushing aggressively for sizable rate hikes. And thus, with yields staying stubbornly near the upper end of uh, the policy range, many market participants believe that the Bank of Japan has to take some sort of action. Some believe that officials should uh, widen the allowable uh, range, while others suggest um, uh, while others call for uh, targeting yields with uh, shorter uh, uh, with uh, with shorter maturity. There are also a few saying that the bank should give up its yield curve control uh, and policy entirely. Now, officials are not expected to proceed with any action at this meeting, but the accompanying statement will be monitored closely. Anything pointing to any of the aforementioned changes or something similar could prove supportive for the Japanese yen, as it may allow 10-year yields to drift higher. However, with other major central banks expected to hike at a very aggressive uh, pace and the Bank of Japan maintaining an, an ultra-loose policy, we doubt that this will signal the beginning of an uptrend in the Japanese yen. We stick to our guns that uh, monetary policy divergence between the Bank of Japan and other major central banks uh, is likely uh, to keep uh, is likely to keep the yen. Uh, the yen downtrend uh, intact. We will consider any decision related strength as a corrective, uh, uh, corrective bounce. Now, as for the rest of uh, today's events, after the Australian CPI is in the head of the Bank of Japan decision, the only release worth mentioning is the US pending home sales for March, with the forecast pointing to 1.5% month over month slide after a 4.1% uh, decline in uh, February. So that's it uh, for me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow.
JFT Just Fair and Direct.